There's a brand new animated family flick out called The Wild Robot, based on the hit book franchise called... Thank you. The Wild Robot. It's this, it's this right here. My daughter loves the book. She really wanted to go see the film. I was going to wait for streaming because typically my audience doesn't seem to care so much about my animated reviews, but the whole family begged me. They came up to me, tears in their eyes, asking, Sir, may we please go to this film? And so after some deliberation, I decided, Sure, this is worth $70 for movie tickets and some drinks to go watch this film. Keep in mind, I have the Regal Pass, so I'm already covered. This is three movie tickets and drinks, $70. What a, what a deal movie theaters are these days. We saw the film though, the real question is, was it worth the price of admission? Or could we have waited for this to come out on streaming? Let's talk about The Wild Robot in a spoiler-free review. Before I get to it, if you wouldn't mind just smashing that subscribe button, just smash the crap out of it as hard as you can, hit the notification bell, and these videos will show up in the future in your feed. All right, what do we have here? The Wild Robot. It's PG. It's an hour and 40 some minutes long. Gets in and out pretty quickly. The story kept moving at a great pace. And it probably helps that you have Chris Sanders at the helm, not only writing, but also directing this bad boy. Previously, he wrote Lilo and Stitch and How to Train Your Dragon. Those little chestnuts. Kind of, kind of decent movies when you think about it. Uh, no, he is very good at this type of storytelling, making the antagonist, the kind of evil character starting out, turn into very sympathetic, downright beautiful creatures by the time it's over. And this movie's downright beautiful. And it was, as a matter of fact, worth the price of admission, even though if it is absurdly overpriced, this is one that you should see on the big screen. The premise is incredibly basic, to the point. We have a robot that has crash-landed on a small little island area full of woodland critters. Lupita Nyong'o voices the robot, known simply as Roz, and this character is out of its element, a uh, wild robot, if you will. Its goal is to perform tasks and make humans happy. Well, there's not a human to be found, and there is no orders for this robot given, so it takes it upon itself to try to help others in need. That is, until Roz finds itself in the possession of a small little baby bird egg that's gonna hatch very quickly, and next thing you know, our robot's a parent. <laughs> Yay! It's a boy! Congratulations! Your life is over! At least that's what my friends told me when I had my first kid. <laughs> they weren't wrong. Speaking of kids, older ones, but still kids, my 15-year-old daughter and my 12-year-old son very much enjoyed this film. She rarely goes to movies anymore because they're overpriced, they smell, the people are rude and awful, but she went and we had a great time and she was crying, I'd say probably three or four times throughout the film. Since I'm an alpha with Sigma status, I held back any sort of salty discharge that was attempting to leave my eyeballs. That wasn't happening. I had to really fight to keep it all together because this is an emotionally solid film from front to back. It pulls at the heartstrings. It keeps you invested with all the fun, unique characters, the dangerous scenarios, the constant bombardment of action and spectacle. This is a beautiful looking film. It has that Puss in Boots last wish look to it. Very vibrant color palette, almost has a dreamy animated style to it. Not an unlikable character in the bunch, not a bad section of film to be seen. All of it plays out so well, easily the best animated film for me this year. I'd say it's better than Inside Out 2. I would say it's better than Transformers 1. This easily trounces those films. But as good as the writing, as good as the voice acting, as good as the visuals are, the thing that stands heads and shoulders above the rest is the score. Which is ironic because I just saw Joker 2 a couple days ago, put a review on the channel of that. I'll have a spoiler up ahead here. Um, that film prided itself on having these musical emotional moments that never really stuck for me. And The Wild Robot accomplishes this almost effortlessly. The freaking music is epic in this thing, and it just gets heavier and harder on you the further the story progresses. I've said this in many reviews before, and I'll continue saying it now. If I really enjoy a movie, the less I say, the shorter the review, the more I'm recommending it. Because I don't want to over-explain things, I don't want to over-hype, I just want people to see movies like this. It really is a treasure. It's got that Iron Giant flavor to it. It's got a bit of that Big Hero 6 charm. 
It's just a damn good family film. There's of course lessons to be learned for the little ones. As a parent, you can absolutely sympathize with Roz. And this film, much like other great movies based on book franchises, I think Harry Potter, they actually encourage people to, once the film's done, run out and read the book. And I, right when we got home, my wife actually grabbed the second book and started reading. That's how much of an impact this film had on her. And so I easily recommend you see The Wild Robot. If you're into animated films, if you're into family flicks, this one's going to pull at the heartstrings. It's going to make you feel that wonder you maybe had when you were a kid watching films that doesn't seem to happen as much as an adult. So there you have it, my thoughts on The Wild Robot. Let me know yours in the comments below. I know it's a week or so out from when I'm reviewing this. I honestly planned on watching it when it came home to streaming, but the family forced my hand and I'm very thankful they did. Let me know if you saw this movie. Please again, think of subscribing, liking the video, sharing, doing whatever. I post content every single week, multiple times. Would love to have you stick around. If you love what I'm doing and you're looking for a way to support this one man band, maybe think about becoming a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. I just brought back one of my favorite shows exclusively for the platform. It's called The Cringe. I play this over the top stupid character that loves everything and hates all the things that's popular to hate. It's just a complete shill of a character. Very fun stuff. If you're at the $5 Patreon or higher, you get access to one of those every month along with 300 exclusive other videos and counting. All right, hopefully I see you around. Take care.